<clears throat> Shalom, Yasha'ala. This is Brother Mapathak. That'll be key, but in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. And um, in this video, we're going to do um, a read along. You know, we're going to do a reading of um, of Ezra, the ninth chapter, which goes into a prayer that, um, I mean, Salakia, Salakia, Nehemiah, the ninth chapter, which goes into a prayer of, um, of Ezra, you know, um, um, just basically praising and blessing the Lord. You know, thanking the Lord for his mercy and his grace that he had upon us, man. You know, for allowing them to be able to rebuild the temple. You know, and pretty much just praising him for everything he did. Going all the way back into the, the times of, 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 of Egypt, man. You know, of the Exodus. <clears throat> so, let's dive right into it. Before we go into it, let's give all praises, honor, and glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakadash. Right? And double honor to the elect elders of the body of Yahweh Shai. You know that labor and rule well and um and salutations to the elect on the four corners of the earth and the brothers on the four corners of the earth that's prophesying and preaching his gospel and his truth and sincerity right and i'm gonna dive right into this thing <clears throat> nehemiah 9 and verse 1 and it reads now in the 20 and fourth day of this month of the children of the children of israel were assembled with fasting and with um, sackcloths and earth upon them it says, and the seed of Israel separated themselves from all the strangers and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in their place and read in the book of the law of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai their power, one fourth part of the day and another fourth part they confessed. So that would be um, when you go into it, it, it will go into like um, one fourth part of the day would be like a good uh, three hours. So three hours of the day, they would um, they would confess. You know, in three hours a day, they will be into the law. Right? And it says, And they stood up in their place and read in the book of the law of the Lord, their God, one fourth part of the day, and another fourth part they confessed and worshiped Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, their power. Then stood up upon the stairs of the Levites, Jeshua and Bani, Kadmiel and Shabaniah, Bunny and Sherebiah, Bani and Shanani, and cried with a loud voice unto the Lord, their God. Then the Levites, Jeshua and Kadmiel, Bani and Hashabaniah, Salakia, um, Khan, Sherebiah, Hadijah, Shabaniah, and Pet uh, Petathiah, um, said, Stand up and bless Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, your power forever and ever. And blessed be thy glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. <clears throat> it says, Thou, even thou, art Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai alone. Thou hast made heaven. The heaven of heavens with all their hosts, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, which is true. The heavenly father made everything. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth, you know, and um, Ezra is giving the heavenly father his praise. And it says, and thou preserveth them all and the host of, of heaven worshipeth thee. And even the host of heaven worshipeth Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the angels, you know, the cherubims. It says. Thou art Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the power who did his chose Abraham and brought us him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees and gave us him the name Abraham, right? So you took Abram, you blessed him and you gave him the name Abraham. It says, and found his, his heart faithful before thee and made us a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Jebusites and the Girgashites to give it, I say, to his seed. And who is that seed that this was all given to? Israel, right? Let's get a quick precept. I don't want to really jump to too many precepts, but uh, a lot of people get confused and think when it speaks about the seed of Abraham, it's speaking about all people and things like that. So let's get a quick precept, right? So this is Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 8. And it reads, <clears throat> But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. This is the point. The seed of Abraham, my friend. So Israel is synonymous with the seed of Abraham. Israel is the seed that's being spoken about. You know? So going back to Nehemiah, the ninth chapter. It says, I, uh, and it says, I say to his seed and has performed thy words for thou art righteous. Right? Verse nine. It says, and did it see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt? Right, and the Lord saw our fix our affliction in Egypt during the times of the Exodus, man. You know where our forefathers was out there complaining and murmuring. You know they were fearful. It was an account where um our forefathers were scared in Exodus the 14th chapter, man. You know, 
And um, hey, and 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 Moses had to tell them, hey, the Lord is gonna fight for you, man. You should you should hold your peace. Roughly paraphrasing. You see, so I'm gonna read verse nine again. It says, and didn't see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt, and heard us their cry by the Red Sea, and the Lord heard our cries, and that's what's happening in these last days in the spiritual Egypt. You know, we're being afflicted and we're crying out to the Lord, and the Lord is hearing us, man. You know. <clears throat> and it says, and showed his signs and wonders upon Pharaoh and on all his servants. And on all the people of his land, for thou knewest that they dealest, they dealt proudly against them, right? So didst thou get thee a name as it is, as it is um, this day. And that's how the Lord got his name. That's how the Lord became famous throughout all the different nations. You know, when they heard about what happened to Egypt, um, even when you read about in the city of Jericho, when um, was it the city of Jericho? I'm not sure if it was the city of Jericho, but the city where they met the sister, the um, the woman Rahab. You know, when you read in Joshua about Rahab, where um, the men of the Lord basically, well, ultimately the Lord preserved her family because she hid the spies, you know, that was sent out from amongst the Israelites. But uh, just the point is that she said, hey, uh, they, they were, people in that town were saying, hey, oh, the, these are the Israelites. We fear because the Israelites are here and we heard about what their God did in Egypt, roughly paraphrasing. And that's what the Heavenly Father is going to do in these latter days. You know, he when he uh, brings judgment upon this earth and... And delivers the Israelites. That's how all these different nations are going to look. They're going to um, they're going to be famous, man. You know, the prophets are going to be be famous in that day. You see, beginning with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, that name is going to be sanctified. That name is going to be no more profane. That name is going to be all throughout the earth. But also the men of the Lord as well. That's prophecy, right? Let me see if I can find that actually. Salaki, I'm on an older phone. Kind of had problems with our other phone, but I believe it's in Zephaniah, right? I believe it's in Zephaniah. Come on, this is what I want. Zephaniah 3 and 19. Right? This is Zephaniah 3 and verse 19. And it says, Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that holteth, and gather her that was driven out. Speaking about the elect. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Let me read that again. Let me read the latter end of this verse once again. It says, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. You see? So the men of the Lord are going to be um, get fame through Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, man. Through, through the, the wonders and, and works of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, man. You know? And it's the same thing that happened back then. That's why they were like, man, these are the Israelites. Their God is, is such and such. You know, we, we, we're fearful of them. So let's go back to Nehemiah 9. And uh, I'll read verse 10 again because this is the point I was touching on. It says, and show his signs and wonders upon Pharaoh and on all his servants, right? And on all the people of this land, for thou knewest that they dealt proudly, proudly against them. So, that, so didst thou get thee a name as it is this day? You see, it says... And thou didst divide the sea before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on, on dry land. Their persecutors thou threwest into the deeps as a stone into the mighty waters, right? Because the um the Egyptians tried to follow us through the Red Sea, and the Lord made the water come back together and, and, and killed a lot of them, man. You know, and it says, Moreover, thou ledest them in the day by a cloudy pillar, and the Lord led us by day in a cloudy chariot, man. You know? It says, and in the night by a pillar of fire to give them light and the way wherein they should go. Thou camest down also upon Mount uh, Sinai and spakest with them from heaven and gavest them right judgments and true laws, good statutes and commandments, and madest known unto them thy holy Sabbath and commandest them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses thy servant. This is all things that the Lord did for Israel. This is why I love this chapter. This is Ezra setting up a prayer to the Lord, you know, and, um, and, and acknowledging the history of Israel, man. Acknowledging what the Lord did for the Israel, the Israelites all throughout history. You know? And on um, verse 15, it says, And gave us them bread from heaven. What is that bread? Yahawashai. You know, what is it's the manna, man. We know ultimately Yahawashai is that manna. It says, And gave us them bread from heaven for their hunger, and brought us forth water for them out of the rock. And spiritually, what is that water? That it's, it's Yahawashai. What is that rock? It's Yahawashai. But we know this is speaking about an actual literal account, man. You know, and the Lord literally gave us water out of a rock in the wilderness, man. You know, the Lord literally fed us bread from the heavens. You see, it says, and promised them 
that they should go into the in to possess the land which thou had sworn to them. And every time I think about that, like even when you read the accounts and you see the Lord sent manna, manna from heaven, split the Red Sea, so on and so forth, you know, um, a lot of people they read these things like, how could this be possible? There's no scientific evidence to back this up, you know. Hey, but you got men of the Lord today. They believe in the chariots. They believe all these prophecies going to come to pass, man, even though they haven't seen a glimpse of it, you know, and that shows that a lot of these, uh, it's the same spirits over and over again. And this, and brothers are able to believe these things that they read because they already seen the miracles, um, in their past lives, man. You know, it's the same spirits being regenerated back on the earth, man. You know, we, we haven't seen any prophets, anything that's, that's second. I believe that's uh second edge the first chapter where it goes into a generation who, who was who weren't going to see any miracles, any prophets, but yet they're still going to believe. And that's the generation we're in, man. You know? And, um, but let's read on. It says, verse 16. But they and our fathers dealt proudly and hardened their necks and hearken not to thy commandments. And this is another thing I noticed as while I was reading this chapter. Is that it clearly shows how we're the Israelites, man. Because we constantly, we gain power and then we fall out of power because we're disobedient. We gain power. We go into captivity and slavery again, over and over again, man. That's all. That's the Lord's greatest judgment to send a nation into captivity. You know, and, and we're just coming out of great captivity, man. For, and, and that started in um, 1619. You know? But it, it says, I'm going to read verse 17. It says, and refuse to obey, neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them. And even when you read this, it makes you think about, because a lot of times you may ask, well, how can somebody get, uh, be in a second wilderness and still rebel? How can somebody get delivered from America and still rebel? But that's not hard to see at all when you read the scriptures, man. You know, I'm going to read this again. Verse 17. It says, And refused to obey, neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them. So the Lord did different, wonder, oh, Salakia, different wonders amongst us. Yet it was Israelites that seen these wonders and still uh, were stiff-necked, man. You know? And it says, But hiring their necks and in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. But thou art a God ready to pardon. Gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and forsookest them not. And this is why I love this chapter. But yet, throughout all that stiff-neckedness, through all that rebellion, the Lord is such a merciful power, man. You know? It says, I'm going to read the latter end of that verse again. It says, but thou art a God ready to pardon. The Heavenly Father is a God that's ready to pardon you of your iniquity, of your transgression. It says, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of a great kindness and forsookest them not. But yet, through our rise and our fall and our rise and our fall, you know, the Lord constantly said, hey, man, I'm going to have mercy on y'all, man. Because we're the Lord, the Lord understands that we're nothing but dust, man. You know, what is that scripture? Salakia. Let me see if I can find it. Khan. So, cause that's a spirit Because that's a chapter I wanted to go to But I'm going to just read it from here That's a spirit um, This is Psalms the 103 and verse 14 It says For he knoweth our frame He remembereth that I got to get the context of that though But that's a great scripture we we'll go to Psalms Psalms 103 Right And um, this whole chapter is good I'm going to start from Oh, man. I'm going to start from 8. This is Psalms 103 and verse 8. It says, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, um, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. You see? He have not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. You see, the Lord is a very merciful power. Right? And that's what we need to strive to be. Yahweh Shai told us in Luke the sixth chapter, um, be ye therefore merciful as the Father in heaven is merciful. But a lot of brothers, they hear teachings of grace and mercy and they they get weary, man. You know, I actually, I actually was just on social media yesterday and I put up a post um, speaking about being uh, gracious and merciful and allowing people to get the time to understand certain things, man, and not just shoving it down their throats and calling them evil because just right now they can't get it, man. You know, we were all ignorant at a point in time and it's going to take time. So you got to be merciful. You got Jake damn hopping on it 
Isaiah 58 and 1, brother. Hey, man, Jake just don't. Yahweh Shai's teachers is a stumbling block for a lot of Jake, man. You know? But I'm going to read on. It says, uh, verse 11. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far have he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai pitieth them that fear him. Right? Verse 14. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. So the Lord is merciful. The Lord looks upon us and says, man, they nothing but dust, man. You know, the Lord knows we're nothing, man. He knows we're nothing but dust. And that causes him to be that much more merciful upon us, man. You know, so let's go back to Nehemiah, the ninth chapter. And it says, where were we? Where were we? Um, we're at verse 18. It says, yeah, when they had made them a molten calf and said, this is thy power. Right. And this is going to when uh, Moses went up to on Mount Sinai to get the, 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 the law, statutes and commandments. And he came back down. And what happened? Jake, they made a damn calf and said, this is the God that delivered us from Egypt. They made a golden calf and said, see, this is the God that delivered us from Egypt, man. You know, so it says, yeah, when they had made them a molten calf and said, this is thy power that brought thee up out of Egypt and had wrought great provocations. Get thou in thy manifold mercies for sickest them not in the wilderness. Even after that, even after they committed idolatry. The Lord, hey, the Lord still had mercy on us, man. You know, so we have to understand the, the power we're dealing with. You see, it says, um, it said the pillar of the cloud departed not from them by day to lead them in the way, neither the pillar of fire by night to show them light and the way wherein they should go. So even after that, the Lord still kept uh, directing our own ways, man, still kept guiding us, still kept protecting us, man. You know, don't get me wrong. We, we understand a lot of our forefathers did die in the wilderness because of their unbelief. But it's the fact that as a nation, the Lord still preserved us, man. You know? And it says, verse 20, Thou gave us also thy good spirit to instruct them, and withheld, and withheld us not thy manna from their mouth, and gave us them water for their thirst. Yea, forty years didst thou sustain them in the wilderness. And the Lord constantly sustained us in that wilderness, so that they lack nothing. Their clothes wax not old and their feet swell not. And that's a heavy, that's heavy to me as well, man. You know? And 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 you have to apply that to times that we think about in the future. You know, being pilgrims on the earth, the time of Jacob's trouble. You see? The Lord put it. The Lord was interfering. Let's just say that. The Lord was interfering. The Lord literally made it so that, okay, I'm gonna make sure your clothes don't own um, wax old. And I'm going to make sure no matter how much you walk, no matter how much you step on these rocks, you may cut your foot. I'm going to make sure your sweet, your feet don't swell up so you can continue to walk. That was, hey, that was the Lord preserving us, man. You know, and the Lord is going to do these same miracles in these latter days. You see, verse 22, it says, moreover, thou gave us them kingdoms and nations and didst divide them into corners. So they possessed the land of Sihon and the land of the king of Heshbon and the land of Og, king of Bashan. Their children also multipliest thou at the stars of heaven and brought us them into the land concerning which thou hast promised to their fathers that they should go in to possess it, right? The land of Israel. So the children went in and possessed the land and thou subduedest, subdued um, before them the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, and gavest them into their hands with their kings and the people of the land that they might do with them as they would. And they took strong cities and the fat land and possessed houses full of all goods. Wills digged vineyards and oliveyards and um, fruit trees in abundance. So did they eat and were filled and became fat and delighted themselves in the great goodness. But what happened again? Nevertheless, they were disobedient. Once again, disobedient. We were given the kingdom. We were given the land. You know, all these great things. Once again, we were disobedient. It says, and rebelled against thee and cast thy law behind their backs and slew thy prophets, which testified against them. To turn them to thee, and they wrought great provocations. Therefore, thou deliveredest them into the hand of their enemies. This is what the Lord does. This is how you know we're the Israelites. When we go off, we get delivered into the hands of enemies, man. Which is what we're going through right now. We're in the hands of our enemies till this day because of our disobedience. You see, it's a constant. When you read the Bible, it's, it's obvious who we are, man. You know, it says. Well, I'm going to read verse 
27 again. It says, Therefore thou deliveredest them into the hand of their enemies who vexed them. And in the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors. And what is this speaking about? It's speaking about judges, man. You know, the Lord raises up many judges. You see, it says, thou gavest them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. But after they had rest, they did evil again before thee. And once the Lord delivers us, we get kind of, hey, my brother Mattathiah was going into it when we was on the highways and byways a few weeks ago. You know, we were going into how uh, Jake, Jake get bored of the Lord. And it's the same way a, a woman's, a man's wife could get bored of him. You know, the brother ain't do anything wrong, but she ready to cheat. You know, she ready to go do her own thing. It's the same way Jake deals with the, with the Lord. You know, and in Israel, we're the Lord's wife, man. You know, beginning with the elect. You see, but that's basically what it says. They got bored and then they went to go do evil again. All right, I'm going to read it again. Verse 28. It says, but after they had rest, meaning they were delivered, they're in their own land, they're chilling. Pretty much they're bored. It says they did evil again before thee, man. They started to go off again, man. You know, it says, therefore, leftest thou them in the hand of their enemies so that they had dominion over them. And once again, whenever we go off, the Lord sends us into the hands of our enemies, man. You know? It says, yet when they returned and cried unto thee, thou heardest from them from heaven. And once again, that's what we're, that's the stages that we're in right now. The, the stage of returning from exile, returning from captivity and crying back unto the Lord. That's the stages that we're currently in. Right. It says. Uh, thou heardest them from heaven and many times didst thou deliver them according to thy mercy. So the Lord's mercy is great. It says, verse 29, and testified us against them that thou mightest bring them again into thy law. Yet they dealt proudly and hearkened not unto thy commandments, but sinned against thy judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them and withdrew the shoulder and hardened their neck and would not hear, man. You know, so we constantly go off. We pray, Lord, please deliver us. And then we go off and the Lord deliver us. And then we go off again. And that's the pattern that you see throughout the Bible. But ultimately, in this last generation, it's, it's going to be over. Once we get delivered, we're never going to go off again. Because that's when we're going to be given the new covenant. We're going to have the law in our inward parts, man. You know? And we're, hey, we're going to live um, um, prosperously with the Lord forever and ever, man. You know? Eternal life. Never feel pain again. Never cry again. Never die again, man. That's all what comes with the new covenant. And that new covenant is only given to us, Israel, man. You know? In verse 30, it says, Yet many years didst thou forbear them and testified us against them by thy spirit and thy prophets. And that's what the Lord is doing now. He's putting the spirit, his spirit on different men to testify against the nation, man. Why is everything I'm reading exactly what's happening, man? You know, as far as captivity. Why... Uh, uh, so-called black Native Americans and Hispanics were went through a, a great Holocaust. Why is it? Why is the Lord putting the spirit on so-called black Native Americans and Hispanics to do what I'm reading right here, man? You know, it says yet would thou. It says, Salakia. I'm gonna read verse thirty again from the top. It says yet many years didst thou forbear them and testified against them by thy spirit and thy prophets. Yet would they not give ear? Why is this all happening that we're reading, man? It says therefore gave us them. Into the hand of the people of the lands. Nevertheless, for thy great mercy's sake, thou didst not utterly consume them, nor forsake them, for thou art gracious and merciful power. And even with us being in the lowest state that we're in now, the Lord did not um the Lord didn't consume us how, how we're really supposed to be consumed. We're really only alive because of the mercy of the Lord. That's limit limitations three and twenty-two, man. You know, if it wasn't for the Lord's mercies, we will be consumed. That's one hundred percent facts. You know, we went through the worst Holocaust. You see? The worst events in, in, in history. But yet, we're, we still, uh, the Lord still preserved us. And that's all due to His mercy. It says, verse 32, Now therefore, O Yahweh, the great, the mighty, and terrible power, who keep His covenant and mercy, let not all the trouble seem little before thee that have come upon us, on our kings, and on our princes, and on our priests, and on our prophets. And on our fathers and on all thy people since the time of the kings of Assyria until this day. Meaning from the time that the Assyrians took the northern kingdom into captivity until uh, this day that he was speaking about. Which was um, after um, the, uh, they came back from Babylonia uh, captivity, man. You know, it says, How be it thou art just in all that is brought upon us, for thou hast done right, but we have done wickedly. He said, But albeit your judgment is right. Us going into that Assyrian captivity, that was true judgment. You know? Us going into um, 
Babylonian captivity, that was true judgment. You know, being under the Persians, that was true judgment. And let me get a quick precept, which I'm going to get in my Bible, you know, my physical sword, because I don't have the app on this phone yet. Um, what was I about to get? Uh, bear with me, Yasha Allah. I want to go to the songs of the three holy children to back up what we just read, right? So this is the song of the three holy children. I'm going to read verse 6. I'm going to start from verse 5. I'm going to start from verse 4, right? Because it backs up what we just read in Nehemiah. It says, For thou art righteous in all the things that thou hast done to us. Yea, true are all thy works, thy ways are right, and all thy judgments are true. So we see them saying the same thing. Like, Lord, yeah, you're, you're, you, that, this is true judgment. You know, and they were in Babylonian captivity. But yet they were still a, uh, able to acknowledge, like, hey, this is righteous judgment because we went off. Verse um, 5, it says, And all things that thou hast brought upon us and upon the holy city of our fathers, even Jerusalem, thou hast executed true judgment. For according to the truth and judgment, didst thou bring all these things upon us because of our sins. You see? You see that? So we deserve all these things because of our own sin. I'm going to jump down to verse 8. Um, it says, Wherefore, all that thou hast brought upon us and everything that thou hast done to us, thou hast done in true judgment. How much more today? Us being in America... You know, us being slaves in America, it's all true judgment because we went off, man. You know, we turned our back on the Heavenly Father. You see? So going back to Nehemiah, the ninth chapter, and we almost done here. A few more verses, I believe. Um, where are we? We have verse 35. It says, verse 30. So lock it, bro, with me. Con, verse 34. It says, neither have our kings, our princes, our priests, nor our fathers kept thy law. Nor hearken unto thy commandments and thy testimonies wherewith thou didst testify against them. For they have not served thee in their kingdom and in thy great goodness that thou gavest them. And in the large and fat land which thou gavest before them, neither turned they from their wicked. Oh, wicked works, Salakia. Right, so even when the Lord gave us a kingdom, we were still going off. Even when King Solomon had a kingdom for 40 years, that was 40 years of peace, he still was going off, man. You know, so we were constantly going off. Right, and it says... Verse 36, Behold, we are servants this day for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof. Behold, we are servants in it. Right? And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. And also they have dominion over our bodies and over our cattle at their pleasure. And we are in great distress. Right? And because of all this, right? So he's saying basically we're still in captivity because they were still under the Persians at this time. You know? And... And it says, because of all of this, we make a sure covenant and write it. And our princes, Levites, and priests sell unto it. It says, and because of this, we make a sure covenant and write it. And our princes, Levites, and priests sell unto it. Right? So, Lord willing, this is edifying. Right? I just wanted to go into this chapter. This is a chapter I was meditating on. I just read it a few days ago. Right? So, uh, with that, I want to give all praise and honor and glory to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash. Right? And I'm um, Shalom.